Welcome to Masters of Self University podcast, your highest source of sacred truths and universal wisdom. Hello, beautiful souls. I'm Rachel Fiore, mystic, spiritual teacher, psychic healer, and founder of Masters of Self University. Join our journey of soul transformation as we deep dive into this latest episode. Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to Masters of Self University podcast. I'm your host for this episode, Rachel Fiore. Welcome, listeners. Thank you for joining me today. Um, We're going to talk about meditation versus spiritual blossoming and which one is actually more effective. So first of all, what is spiritual blossoming? We are going to get into that. Um, That is a new term that you have never heard of until right now. So I am introducing what spiritual blossoming is. But first, let me mention meditation. Um, I know a lot of you out there are probably meditators. You probably have your own special form or type of meditation that you do. Um, Meditation is incredible and amazing and wonderful. What I want you to understand about meditation, there are two main types. No matter what type of meditation you do, they fall into two categories, active meditation or passive meditation. Okay. I've done a whole podcast episode on that. So if you really want more detail and want to understand that and dive more deeply into it, please go listen to that. Um, It's active or passive. So transcendental meditation, it doesn't matter the type that you learn or how you meditate. You are either in an active form of meditation or a passive form of meditation. So Um, Let me just say briefly, in case you haven't listened to the other uh, podcast, I won't go into detail about this, but I want to make sure you understand before I move on that a simple example of active meditation is repeating a mantra over and over or um, incorporating movement into your meditation, like doing a walking meditation. That's an active meditation. Uh, Little kiddos, say kindergartners, first graders, if they are in a school who teaches meditation, Almost always they're teaching active meditation first for the really young kiddos because it's a lot easier to repeat a word or a phrase while they're, you know, silently walking in the halls of the school. So it's active meditation that they're taught because they're so young. Um, And then, of course, passive meditation is literally when you're trying to sit in the nothingness, in the stillness, that your mind is not active and wandering and thinking You're literally just in the nothingness. That's a very passive, that's a passive form of meditation. So now that we are clear that no matter what style of meditation you participate in or that you do for yourself or that you've tried, every single one in the world is either active or passive, okay? So one more thing I'll say about that. If you've tried meditation and you're like, this doesn't work for me, I don't like it, I can't do it. I hear that a lot with people. Most of the time, what's actually happening is you're being introduced to passive meditation. It's just a lot of people don't realize there are two categories of meditation, active or passive. And a lot of times what, you know, like amazing meditative meditation teachers are teaching is like a passive form of meditation. That's really hard. That's a very, a way more advanced form of meditation. Okay. So those of you who have tried it and failed and can't do it and all of that. I want you to understand something. If you want to keep trying it, because there are magnificent benefits to meditation, of course, we all know that. So if you want to try it again, try the active form, um, go to an active type of meditation and see if that helps. Okay. A more advanced form of meditation is the passive. So just understand it's like, you know, high school is more advanced than elementary school. Neither is inferior. Both are critical. Both are important. Both are amazing. We need elementary school before we get to high school. And with meditation, it's no different. Go to the active form. That's a more elementary type of meditation. It doesn't make it inferior. It makes it powerful and what is needed for the person who needs the active. And then at some point, most people in active meditation can transition pretty easily. Once they've mastered active meditation, they can transition pretty darn easily into the more advanced passive forms of meditation. So all the styles that teach a different varying types of passive meditation, more advanced forms. Okay. 
So as long as you understand that there's active and passive one or the other, those are the two types of meditation. I can now talk about what spiritual blossoming is. Okay. Spiritual blossoming is an energetic connection. It's not a type of meditation. It's not an actual meditation. So even though it is, it is something kind of similar, it isn't the exact same thing. Okay. It is an energetic connection where you are simultaneously engaging in an active energetic process and a passive energetic process because this is a form, this is an aspect of oneness consciousness. In oneness, there is no duality. There is no one or the other. There is no active only or passive only. How the hell can you have active and passive in the same process, in the same energetic connection? So it's a type of energetic connection that is active and simultaneously it is passive. So I'm going to explain that. So with all the things that I teach and all the things that I offer, infused in it is oneness consciousness or um, aspects of or of the 20 universal ways of oneness. So sometimes particularly one or two or three or a handful of the of the 20 universal ways of oneness, okay? That's what I teach. That's what I heal with. That's, you know, what I use to transform energetically. And the way of connection, of course, is one of the ways of oneness, right? And with the way of connection, spiritual blossoming is an energetic connection where we begin with the way of connection, okay? So we start with the way of connection. The way of connection is the sixth the universal way of oneness. And this process literally is learning how to actively work with subtle energies. Okay. So when you learn how to actively work with subtle energies, one of the vibrational frequencies of enlightened oneness consciousness is the way of connection. And you learn how to utilize the way of connection to, on an energetic level, connect you to the heart and soul of Mother Earth because that grounds you in your humanness, that grounds you in your human experience, okay? It also connects you, um, you know, to your chakras and different things and your energy bodies and all of that, but it then connects you to your soul, to your spiritual self, to creator consciousness, and to oneness consciousness, okay? So, of course, I'm kind of summarizing and simplifying here. But the way of connection, when we are performing spiritual blossoming, engaging in spiritual blossoming, that is the active part. We actively command energies. We actively energetically connect to the various things that we are energetically connecting to, becoming a very open channel to where we are simultaneously grounded into Mother Earth, grounded into our human experience, and connected powerfully with an open energetic channel to the highest frequencies we have access to, our soul, our spiritual self, creator consciousness, oneness consciousness. We are not one or the other. We are not grounded in humanness, denying our spiritual selves. We are not off in la la woo woo fucking spiritual land where we deny we even are human anymore. It's ridiculous. We are here to have a human experience. So these are aspects of dualistic principles that people practice only, you know, functioning on, uh, sorry, only thinking about or working with the functioning of the physical body. Hence Western medicine. Hello. That denies our spiritual mystical aspects of ourselves, period end. It denies it. So guess what? You cannot fully heal when you are only acknowledging one aspect of you, the human aspect of you. When you are, you know, going off in spiritual woo-woo crazy land, you are way too spiritual, way too woo-woo where you're denying your humanness. All you're doing is spiritually bypassing. And this is where 
you hear about people saying like the Kundalini awakening made me crazy. No, it didn't. You weren't grounded. You were denying your humanness. You were off in the la la stuff that happens when you're doing yoga or you're meditating or you're doing, you know, plant medicine or whatever spiritual thing you're doing to try to awaken and elevate. And meanwhile, you're doing it at dangerous levels because you're denying your humanness. You are not balanced when you do that, period, end. You, no human being is in energetic balance if they only see themselves as a physical being, physical vessel, human, a person, or if they only see themselves as a spiritual, spiritual, spiritual aligned person. It's ridiculous. You are completely out of balance. Neither one of those extremes of those polarized opposites have are enlightened. You are not a highly elevated, highly conscious being when you are quote unquote one or the other. It doesn't matter how goddamn spiritual you are. You're not an enlightened being because you're often woo woo spiritual la la land 90% of the, or more of the time. It doesn't make you awakened. Do you understand? So it doesn't mean now don't interpret this with your egoic dualistic minds. <laughs> How far are you going to get in your path of healing, elevating, and awakening if that is how you're misinterpreting everything that's taught to you with your egoic, polarized, opposite, dualistic mind? You can't. That's the whole point of everything that I'm teaching is to wake up for real to all of these things. None of these things are bad or wrong. Again, only the ego judges things as bad or wrong and labels them like that. Understand what duality is. We have lived for centuries in a dualistic world. And here's where a lot of people make a lot of freaking mistakes out there teaching you. Well, we live in a dualistic world. The duality is never going to end. But, bleh, wrong. Big X, red flashing, wrong. Stop it. We have created that for centuries for a reason. Humans, our souls, moved through those dualistic experiences for a reason, many reasons. I'm not going to get into all the reasons. There's no time for that in this particular episode. It doesn't matter anyway. But that age is over. We have entered now into officially the age of Aquarius or the age that I call the new golden age of harmony. Okay. From, um, you know, an astrology perspective, it's, it's the age of Aquarius. Um, which is beautiful and perfect and wonderful, but I don't call it that for a reason because the 20th way of oneness is the way of harmony. When we as humans can achieve becoming the universal ways of oneness, we are the ones that create harmony and live harmoniously on this planet, with this planet, with all of the beings on this planet, including each other. We are creating a harmonious planet, a harmonious existence and that is the new golden age of harmony when we can achieve the universal ways of oneness. Okay. So March 23rd marked the, um, of 2023 marked the new golden age of Aquarius officially started. So we've had that shift. Okay. Now, what does that have to do with spiritual blossoming? Everything. <laughs> because the new golden age of harmony means oneness consciousness and the universal ways of oneness are here to ignite this planet and elevate this planet now. And it is time for us to receive teachings of oneness consciousness, not the old paradigm of teachings and practices that create duality and allow us to continue to live in duality. Okay. Having said that, it doesn't mean practices are wrong. So stop misinterpreting when you are being educated in this stuff. Keep your ego to yourself, right? And open yourself up and learn. We are moving away from, so a more elevated practice now are practices that energetically incorporate aspects of oneness consciousness, period, end. That's all. You're entering into college, a master's degree, a doctorate. You're ready for that now versus preschool, kindergarten, elementary school, and high school. So think about it that way. It's an easy analogy that everybody can comprehend that what we've lived in for the last centuries 
elementary school, preschool, kindergarten. I mean, we barely passed fucking preschool and kindergarten, to be perfectly honest. Look at what we're doing to each other and how much hate and war and violence there still is. So we have a long way to go. But we've lived for centuries in those lower levels of consciousness in the consciousness of a dualistic experience where we create duality and we experience polarized opposites. And why? Because we're not in balance, because we weren't ready for oneness consciousness. So we've been moving through a collective transformation globally, right? Humanity has been. And because of that, and that's been happening for a couple of decades now, well, since 2012 officially, but um, it's not like that wasn't happening to certain degrees prior to then. Um, but now we are officially moving into the next phase of it where the age of Aquarius is here, the new golden age of harmony. Energetically, we are there. It's time to elevate higher and to start learning practices and start becoming more aware of the practices of oneness consciousness that teach us oneness consciousness, that promote oneness consciousness and allow us and guide us on how to become beings of oneness consciousness. Okay. Spiritual blossoming is one of those practices because it has an active part, which I've already described, using, utilizing the way of connection in order to actively connect, okay, energetically. And when you energetically connect to what I've already mentioned, like the heart and soul of Mother Earth, up to your higher self, your spiritual self, creator consciousness, oneness consciousness, that right there starts to balance your entire energies your entire energetic system, your entire chakra system, your physical body, anything unhealed inside of you, it starts to balance all of that. Why does it begin to balance energetically everything inside of you that is out of balance? Because it's oneness consciousness. So it's not just an active process. That is the first part that I have described. The second part of this that happens simultaneously when you are the way of connection, you are also connected to all of divinity, to your divinity. You are in this process in spiritual blossoming. You are also open and passively receiving the benefits of the way of connection. And during spiritual blossoming, then other ways of oneness are used. Whatever those ways are, that are needed for you in that moment, that are needed for your life situation, that are needed for your intentions to um, participate in spiritual blossoming, for example, right? You want to sit down and have the benefits of this energetic connection. You want to sit down and blossom energetically. Then you're in the energy of openness. That's the way of presence. Of receiving, which is the way of presence. And you are sitting in these energies actively and passively, but you're doing it as a simultaneous process. I have to obviously use language and explain it like it's two different things, but it is all happening simultaneously. Okay. So when you understand that with spiritual blossoming, that is now a process, an energetic connective process to calm, to heal, to connect, to elevate. You start your day with that. You can use this as a practice um, when there are challenging times. It is the closest thing to it is meditation. As I've already mentioned, meditation, you are doing either active meditation or passive, one or the other. You're not doing any of those simultaneously. And the reason for that is there are very specific, wonderful properties and intentions with different forms of meditation that we have used for centuries. They were needed. We needed them. They're amazing. They're incredible. They're beautiful practices. But age of Aquarius, new golden age of harmony. We have just crossed the threshold of a new age. We have elevated. We have shifted to where now it is time to elevate above and beyond those practices, which those practices, by the way, if you are, you know, five years old, 
just entering school, what practice would you use? You would still start with meditation, for example, active meditation. Okay. There are different forms of spiritual blossoming where those practices will no longer be needed if they just will no longer be needed at some point. It doesn't mean they're not beautiful and beneficial as long as you understand what they are and the time frame you should use them and therapeutically how they can really help you to advance to a higher level. When you understand and live your life that way, you're living as a divinely mature being, as a spiritually mature being. And you understand that no different than um, a professional baseball player probably started with T-ball. The ball was sitting on a stand, stationary, and they had to just hit it, <laughs> you know, with their little bat that's very lightweight. That's how you start to learn to play baseball, for example. And when you start there, but you obviously don't go to practice as a professional baseball player, and that's what you use. Those are the tools you use in your practice. Those aren't the tools you use and the equipment that you use in your games against other teams, right? Simple to understand it that way. So why are we so goddamn resistant when it comes to those exact same concepts with spiritual education? Think about that, right? So we elevate now above and beyond. We go to a higher level of practice and it's an energetic practice, an energetic connection where we are actively participating, actively creating this process while simultaneously passively receiving, okay? When we are passively receiving, we are receiving the, um, the healing, the transformation. We are receiving sometimes the wisdom, which the 19th way of oneness of the universal ways of oneness is the way of wisdom. This is when you are in spiritual blossoming and then wisdom comes through, okay? I also want you to think of it like this. If you plant a seed in the soil, the seed was placed in the soil, right? It is absorbing the nutrients of the soil. It's absorbing the water. That seed sprouting roots, that seed growing through the soil, pushing up through the earth, that seed becoming a flower, blossoming, blooming, receiving the nutrients now from the light of the sun as well as the soil. It is receiving nutrients. It's receiving the light. It is blossoming. It is blooming. That is an active process and a passive process. That is oneness consciousness. If you watch a flower grow from seedling to beautiful in full bloom, this blossom, it is an aspect of oneness consciousness because there's no duality. It's not one or the other. It is in balance. It is completely balanced between actively participating, between giving effort, moving action, and also receiving what it needs to receive in order to blo fully bloom, to come into full bloom, right? It is a giving and a receiving simultaneously. It is active and passive simultaneously. And what you end up with is this beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous flower. The fragrance of it is amazing. It is beautiful to look at, right? It makes everything that's near it prettier and more beautiful, aesthetically pleasing. Everyone benefits from the oneness consciousness of that beautiful flower, right? Think about it that way. When you think about it that way, it's easier to understand what spiritual blossoming is active and passive, giving and receiving simultaneously in the same practice. The benefit of that is far greater than previously what we've learned how to do and what we've learned to become because we are elevating beings because we are infinite divine beings. There is always a level now to go higher and it is time for humanity to elevate with higher levels of teachings higher levels of more elevated practices. That's all. So as you are ready to embrace more elevated forms of practice, they're going to come forward. Spiritual blossoming is one of them. So how do I spiritually blossom? Energetically, you as a person, you as a human, you as a woman, you as a man, you as anything you identify with, you as a human being, 
you as an energetic being, just like my example with a flower blooming, a flower blossoming, it's active and passive, it's oneness consciousness. The spiritual blossoming, it's called that for a reason, because you are spiritually blossoming when you participate, you are a co-creator in the very blossoming you're trying to achieve, in the very elevating of you, of yourself that you're trying to achieve, in the healing of yourself that you're trying to achieve. Those goals that you have are what you would like to achieve spiritually, emotionally, mentally. You are doing that, co-creating that process, actively participating in it while receiving the energy, the healing, the benefit of it simultaneously. It is time to actually understand, comprehend, and become what oneness consciousness is. And this is a simple practice to help you get there. Now, how do I do it? How do I do spiritual blossoming? Teach it to me. Give me the steps. Give me the hacks. Uh-uh. Listen. I'm introducing it to you now, and I have already said, I have already said several times and explained to you, it's a very elevated practice. Okay. In ancient times, you came to mystical schools, you learned, you practiced, you made it a priority. You had your mystical spiritual teachers, your spiritual leaders teach you, guide you, show you, instruct you, support you. They gave you the teachings. They helped you learn these practices. They helped you become these practices. Okay. This only knowledge base. Give me the five best hacks bullshit. Tell me how to do it step by step here. And then I can just do it. It is not achievable in that way. That paradigm has just ended. These are elevated, elevated practices. And that means you don't listen to it. Here's how you do it. Step one, step two, step three. There you go. You can do it now. You're done. That is not how this works. That is not how the universal ways of oneness work. They are extraordinarily high elevated vibrational frequencies. So when you work with them, you have to learn how to work with them or it just doesn't work for you. You can't literally, you don't have the power energetically to work with these frequencies until you gain the power and learn how to work with these frequencies, right? So this is my analogy of you don't get to start a master's degree program if you haven't passed elementary school. And that these teachings and these practices our master's degree, our doctorate in this analogy. They are very elevated spiritual teachings and practices, okay? And it doesn't mean give up and go away and come back in 10 years. It's just understanding what they are and why when I explain it or give you a briefing of it, okay, I'm going to try that. I mean, by all means, you can try it. Energetically, when you don't know how yet to work with subtle energies, you don't know how to alchemize and get your programs, your wounds out of the way. You don't get them out of the way by ignoring them and pretending they're not there and thinking positive vibes only. That's bullshit. That none of that works. It's not transformative. It doesn't alchemize anything. And when you have all of those programs, all of those wounds, that unhealed stuff, that unhealed trauma in you, you can't work effectively with vibrational frequencies like this. What you need to learn is how to alchemize, become more powerful. Your body, your physical body elevates and holds more light during that process. This is exactly the stuff that we teach in our coaching programs at Masters of Self University, by the way. We teach them this way as a foundational practice for a reason for you to become more powerful, more elevated, self-empowerment. So you can achieve this for yourself and live your life in this sense of power. You can heal anything. You learn that and now you're ready to receive more elevated spiritual practices like spiritual blossoming, like working with the universal ways of oneness and allowing those frequencies to come into your body and then using those frequencies to alchemize, to heal at a more powerful level, to balance you, to ground you more, to elevate you more, to open up your psychic and spiritual and healing gifts that you have in there. All of that happens organically as a byproduct of doing these practices. But you have to go through elementary school and high school before you get to college, before you get to master's degree, et cetera. You get that analogy. This is no different. Okay. So 
if you want to learn more about spiritual blossoming, um, ask questions in the comments. Seriously, ask questions. I can teach a little bit more about it um, in, in the podcast. However, for you to energetically accomplish and achieve what this really means, get a consultation at Masters of Self University. Seriously, do one of our coaching programs. Join one of our group classes, The Power Within. That is what prepares you to be able to receive and be very successful in an elevated practice like spiritual blossoming. Okay. If you're not there yet, that is okay. Sign up for our classes. Start the work. Do this more elevated, this deeply transformational work. That is what prepares you for the next steps, the next tools, the more elevated practices, right? You get that by now. Um, and also, by all means, really focus on, you know, meditation in the meantime. Use those other tools in the meantime. They will help you. They absolutely will help you. And remember that little tip that I gave you early on in this episode, that if, but meditation doesn't work for me, but active meditation might, you might just not have had any idea that there's active versus passive meditation. So go do the active meditation for a while. That might really help you. You might see some results. You might calm your energies down a little bit and that stuff. Those are always beautiful tools to use prior to coming to learning the work that we offer at Masters of Self University. It's, it's preparatory work. It, it benefits you. It, it, it is never going to harm you. It's never going to hinder you in any way. Those are beautiful practices. By all means, do them. And do that in the meantime. Do that until you sign up and join the Power Within, a group class. You sign up for coaching. You sign up for the Power Within, the group class. And then you're more elevated and powerful enough to be able to receive the class that I teach on the introduction to the ways of oneness. For example, when you learn that, you'll be able to learn an elevated practice of spiritual blossoming. So that's one of the other classes that will come, but you have to take Power Within, Introduction to the Ways of Oneness for a reason. The age of filling ourselves up with a bunch of knowledge and all we're doing is inflating our ego with intellectualization, with all of this, I read 500 million freaking books and I've memorized all of them and I can quote all of them, doesn't do shit for you as far as healing yourself and living a life of emotional freedom. All you did was gain a bunch of knowledge. If you don't integrate and become the knowledge you're gaining, then quite frankly, for the most part, it is a waste of time. And it, not to mention the harmful effects that that has, it completely traps you in your mental programming. It completely traps you in your mind. All that mental energy is absolutely draining. It is exhausting. It wears you down. You could go run a marathon and not be as exhausted as if you're in your, compared to when you are in your mind, gaining knowledge, using your mind all day long, left brain thinking. It is absolutely energetically exhausting. It wipes you out faster than almost anything can wipe you out. You get a great workout. You might be freaking exhausted, feel like you're going to collapse. And then a little bit later, how, how good do you feel? Mental energy, mental exhaustion is different. And we have lived in mental exhaustion being drained from all of the knowledge that we gain without any of the teachings of how to integrate this knowledge to expand energetically, expand your physical body on an energetic level, but your physical body elevates and expands and becomes more and more and more powerful over time when you are taught how to do that with the spiritual education that you are receiving. Filling your head up with a bunch of knowledge is a waste of time and it is draining. Stop doing it. Take it the steps further by actively and passively participating in a group class like the ones we offer at Masters of Self University, for example. Those classes are all infused with oneness consciousness whether you know it or not, doesn't matter. They are. 
They are infused with an active participation and a passive receiving of the wisdom of the energetic healing transformational energies that are offered during those classes, the activations that are offered during those classes. It is a, it is an active and a passive process simultaneously, right? So when you understand that, it is why we offer next to none of, of just digital courses at MSU. And one of them is going to be going away very soon and will not be offered ever again as just a digital course. Um, we only offer a couple and that is for a reason because gaining a bunch of knowledge doesn't do shit to heal you. You cannot transform your life, your relationship, your life experience or what you're suffering from or what you're struggling with by just taking a digital course for a certain price and doing it on your own. You only get a fraction out of it if you are not energetically being taught, energetically engaging. If you don't have that instructor energetically reading your energies and guiding you on what, where you're stuck, what you're, what's in your blind spot, where you need to shift, what you're not seeing, and energetically what you're not doing properly. Nope, we have to make a couple adjustments. You're actually not engaging in this energy. You're not performing this practice accurately yet. How do you know that? Because your coach tells you, your coach points it out. They show you, oh, great, that's course correction. If you don't have that master coach, that master teacher in front of you to help you, you will have no idea you're doing something quote unquote wrong. You'll have no idea you're not actually activating things and engaging and transforming energetically You'll think you are, or the opposite also happened. You think nothing is happening, so you abandon the practice. This didn't work. This is stupid. Ugh. And why do you think nothing is happening? Because you are not yet skilled enough to detect the subtle of the most subtle of the most subtle energies that are happening, transforming, healing, alchemizing, elevating first. The average person has no ability to do that. It doesn't mean you can't gain the ability. Think about this. Does an infant have the ability to run a fucking marathon? No, they're an infant for Christ's sake. This is no different. We are not raised with this wisdom yet, right? It's been held back and kept secret for centuries, literally. Okay. Governments do everything they can to make sure humans will not awaken. They brainwash. They do all the things, okay? They do it for a reason, to keep you unconscious, to keep you easily brainwashed, to keep you in fear programs. So when you really understand that, it allow you to get out of the old then how brainwashed you've been mentality of just give it in a digital course and charge 10 bucks for it and no, no. The ancient practices of how we need to teach, the pricelessness of what real education actually is, and I'm not talking about the stupid, fucked up, dysfunctional, brainwashing, horrible um, educational systems that have been put in place, especially in the United States. I'm not talking about the systems. I'm talking about actual, real, authentic education itself, priceless. Why do you think the educational systems are dysfunctional and corrupt and terrible? Why do you think, think about it, to keep you at a certain level. So all of you that love to get in a fucking uproar over shit when I'm teaching this stuff to you, maybe now you'll wake up a little bit more about what I am actually offering to you by waking you up to this shit. Understanding you've been kept at a level for a reason and in order to actually elevate is not just about suddenly one day, oh my God, I know the government's corrupt. I'm awake now. I'm woke as fuck. Jesus fucking Christ. No, you're not. I mean, you might be woke AF, but you sure as fuck aren't awakened yet. Awakening and elevating is an energetic process. Raising your level of consciousness, authentically awakening, elevating to a higher level of consciousness and a higher level of consciousness is an energetic process that also, by the way, includes a physical process of the body adapting and adjusting to that higher level of consciousness. 
to that beingness now, your physical body cannot remain the same as it was when you were at a lower level of consciousness than when you were at a higher level of consciousness. Your physical body can't even handle certain elevated practices if you first haven't passed the previous grades and achieved the previous practices yet. This is what real education actually is. And this is what's been kept a secret and been kept from you for centuries. Okay. Now that we are here in this place, let's shift and open into valuing spiritual education authentically, actually what it is. It is an energetic process. It is an energetic education. And it is a process of learning where you elevate and go to different grades, so to speak. And you can't achieve the highest levels if you haven't mastered the lower levels. There is a process for a reason. So, meditation versus, versus spiritual blossoming, which is more effective. I hope you've realized in this episode that when you are more elevated, Meditation will not work on you the way that spiritual blossoming is, but meditation is what helps you get to a place where you are elevated enough to then go to the next level and perform and participate in something like spiritual blossoming. That practice is an extraordinarily elevated practice, which is more effective. Meditation, if you have no idea what this stuff is which is more effective when you start to elevate and start to shift towards the universal ways of oneness. When you start to become the ways of oneness, when you start to be a more elevated, more elevated being, more powerful being, more divine being, spiritual blossoming, they all have their place. If you are really ready for, you feel called to do these really highly elevated practices, go to mastersofselfuniversity.com, check out our classes, start to participate and take our classes. We teach those classes live with a live coach, live coaches, live teachers for a reason, as I've already previously described, because this is a different type of education, not just take some digital course and see what you get from it, right? Um, if you're really ready to learn things like spiritual blossoming, then go take the, the foundational courses at Masters of Self University, all right? Another thing you can do, Make sure you purchase and read The 20 Universal Ways of Oneness, Mason's Way, The 20 Universal Ways of Oneness Taught by the Spirit of an Enlightened Dog. Every way of oneness is laid out for you. It is introduced to you. You can read this book and you can get it on Amazon. You can read this book and introduce yourself to the 20 ways of oneness. Start to read, start to learn, Start to allow those energies to come into your physical body, your energy centers, your subtle energy bodies by reading, by embracing what the universal ways of oneness are. And then you can learn way more deeply with them, learn to be healed with them by them, have them activate and be anchored into you on an energetic level. That's part of what we do in our classes. That's part of what I do in my spiritual healings with people, by the way. If you want to have a more intimate relationship with them, this is what Masters of Self University is for. Come learn, participate, integrate this stuff into your beingness, into your life, into your relationships, and see the beautiful effects. See what happens when you do that. Your life completely transforms. You as a being completely transform, but it is a process. And we take you higher and higher and higher and higher and higher as we go. But you've got to be willing to start to start in elementary school right? And then raise up higher and higher and higher. The more you achieve, the higher you go. All right. So thank you for listening. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on these episodes. They are released twice a week and make sure you share this with everybody, you know, thank you for listening. We appreciate your support. Have a beautiful day and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now, everybody.